Welcome to the MidwestSports.net YouTube channel, and with me today on the summit is Coach Joe Woodley, the head coach of the Grand View football team. And Coach, your team continues to run in the playoffs. The Vikings earned a hard-fought 14-6 victory last week over the College of Idaho, and, and uh, you just continue to roll a couple of wins in the playoffs, both tightly contested after a 31-30 victory over Concordia the previous weekend. But let's talk about this past weekend and the win over the Yotes. Yeah, Joey, it was uh, it, it was like you said a hard fought win, and uh, I thought we uh, you know we we played pretty good. Uh, you know, the, I know the fourteen points may not sound like uh, we were very efficient on offense, but uh, I, I I feel that we were. Um, you know, we we got out of some tough field positions. We punted the ball. We won field position all day long, uh, and I thought that was going to be a key uh, against this College of Idaho team. They scored. 70 points in the first round and I think they were averaging <laughs> 50 some points throughout the course of the season so uh, we knew uh, they, they were going to be a tough tough animal uh, to, to handle uh, defensively for us with their offense they had a quarterback that's very elusive and uh, they run design quarterback run plays and it's those are always tough to defend just because uh, an extra gap gets created and you're, you're going to be short so guys have to get off blocks and uh, kind of two gap a little bit. And I thought, you know, and they got some things going and I knew they would because that's their identity. They were going to run the football. Uh, but the thing I think we took care of uh, or took away from them and made them play a little bit left-handed was, was their play action and uh, you know, their, their naked, naked bootleg and all that type of stuff. So we, you know, we got up on the line of scrimmage and, you know, we weren't going to just sit there and uh, only rush three or four uh, and let that kid have all day to kind of survey the land. Uh, in the past game, because that's what they've been very successful with. So we wanted to to get up and challenge him, and we were going to play some man coverage behind it to to make him make some good throws. And uh, we were able to, you know, intercept him twice, and uh, he actually fumbled it once uh, that we recovered. So, uh, you know, we feel uh, the game plan worked out pretty well. Uh, and then we get a stop at the end of the game on – or towards the end of the game, it was fourth and one, and they're they're driving down to – you know, possibly, you know, score a touchdown and get a two point conversion to tie it. But uh, they went forward on fourth and one right around the 15 yard line, I think it was, and uh, going in. And uh, we come up with a huge stop. And uh, we had, we did that a couple, a uh, couple times on, on Saturday with some fourth down stops. So all those things kind of played into that victory. And uh, like I said, our, our special teams were uh, outstanding uh, as they have been most of the year. Uh, especially with our punter. He's arguably one of our most valuable players. Uh, and I knew that coming into the year, and I knew he'd be valuable just because, um, you know, coming into this season, we didn't return one uh, starting offensive uh, offensive lineman. So we had five new linemen. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I so I knew it was going to be uh, kind of an uphill battle a little bit at first. But those guys have come along, and we have found ways to complement them with some of the things we're doing on offense. And um, you know, here, here we are at 13 and 0 in the semis. And, um, you know, I, I didn't anticipate this, but, uh, you know, I mean, of course, <laughs> of course you expect to win every game you play in, but you know, things happen and, uh, but, but there's just something different about this team. And, you know, I, I, I wish I could bottle it up and, and, and know exactly what it is, but, uh, we, we've got great leadership. Uh, we, we only elected two captains and those are as good of captains as I've ever been around. And, uh, just with the way they come out to practice every day and kind of get everybody to uh, to rally around them and rally around the coaches and what we're doing and buying into, you know, kind of uh, how, how we're getting this thing done. So um, been a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, we want to we want to make sure this thing keeps going because it's uh, it's a lot of fun to go out to practice every day and watch these guys play on Saturdays and you know, I tell them all the time, like, guys, you guys are turning me into a fan on Saturdays, cause <laughs> uh, especially this past Saturday. I, I'm usually not very emotional during games, uh, but but Saturday I, I couldn't hold it back. I was, it was just so fun watching them play on, on both sides. And, you know, and then last week our, our backup quarterbacks, the guy who won the game for us, you know, he – uh, he was actually our starter a year ago, and then uh, through three games this year, I made a switch and uh, brought a kid in, but he got hurt in the first round game, and so he couldn't play uh, Saturday. So Ben Firkin, who was our starter a year ago, came in and you know he managed the game, did a heck of a job, made some really good throws, and uh, he just operated our offense, and, and you know, and that's that's all we asked asked him to do, and he did it, and 
uh, found a way to uh, to keep this thing going. Wow, Coach. I, and I can imagine not only it would be emotional, but it would be fun to watch that, especially from your perspective uh, down on the sideline. Well, you talk about the defense, and that's <clears throat> really something I wanted to, to talk about as well. You know, the, the long drive you mentioned, I mean, nearly 80 yards as College of Idaho was driving in the fourth quarter. You shut that down and stop it on, on downs. But you go back to the second quarter again because that's really where you all were able to to really put the points on the board that you needed to. And, and you mentioned uh, the, the defense and the way it played. Of course, you get on the board after trailing 3 nothing, and then uh, Ben Furkin finds uh, Anthony Turner for a touchdown pass. You get the ball right back after that interception and, and, and what you all were able to do on defense and shut – down the College of Idaho offense in that way and picking off the ball there, coming right back, Jerry Lowe with the touchdown uh, to follow that, and then a fumble, uh, missed field goal, but then another interception at the end of the half, and that shut down another drive right right before the half. So uh, a big second quarter, you score all 14 points there, but it was enough. Yeah, it was. And like I said, that defense just kind of, you know, they, uh, you know, we scored our first touchdown off turnover, second one, and then we got another one. And, uh, you know, we just, you know, I, I lined up to, to go for it on about fourth and I think it was fourth and five or fourth and six. We were about the 27 yard line. Uh, and that's two yards past my kind of threshold for our kickers uh, when I want to attempt a, a field goal. But we had a good win behind us. <laughs> so I decided to I decided to call a timeout after we had lined up. I'm like, you know what? These points are so critical uh, if we can get them, obviously hindsight's 2020 but had we had those extra three points at the end of the game you know we were going to be sitting pretty but uh it, it doinked off the upright and uh you know and, and we got a really good kicker and you know we can't expect him to make them all and he's made <laughs> i think i'm not sure what he is this year i want to say he's maybe 11 to 15 or something like that so the odds were good and i said you know let's give ham a shot and um you know we we, we missed there it would have been nice to to get some points off that other turnover but uh, but yeah, you know, Brendan Flowers played a, you know, he made a big time pick right, you know, early on there in the second, uh, and then got another one as they were driving because their their kicker is outstanding for Idaho. So we kept three points off the board there for them, um, you know, for for him going to make that play. So just you know, it's it's been like that most of the year, uh, just timely stops. You know, I don't think we're an overly talented football team. Uh, we we've just really played well. Uh, you know, like I said, complimentary football, offense, defense, special teams, uh, just trying not to put ourselves in bad situations. You know, we've went through uh, two playoff games, knock on wood, without turning the football over. Uh, <laughs> and any time you do that, you're going to be in great shape. So in, uh, early on in the year, we weren't taking care of the ball, uh, taking care of the football very well. And, uh, you know, we've just gotten better and better. You know, we stress it all the time and uh, kids are really starting to buy into it. Our penalties have been good. Uh, the past two games now, granted, I think once you get to the playoffs, they kind of let you play a little bit. I wish that's how the the regular season was. <laughs> you know, they're, they're looking for everything in the regular season, but uh, they kind of just let the teams decide it. And, you know, and there's calls, you know, you get upset about, but they're doing it both ways. We've been, we've had two really good crews, I think, uh, fish wise. And, you know, like I said, they just let you play and that's, uh, that's how it should be, you know, because you could call holding, you could call a lot of things about every down, but right. you know, is it really affecting the play? You know, and that's kind of the way I've always looked at, uh, you know, some of those um, uh, officiating crews. You know, we got we got lucky with one too. I shouldn't say lucky. I mean, it was a penalty, uh, but they had a, their quarterback scrambled for about a, I don't know, a seventy or seventy-five yard touchdown, and uh, they had a blindside block on one of our kids, so it got called back. So. Um, you know, that, that was a big turning point in the game could have gotten their momentum going. And, right. uh, you know, we, uh, we dodge that bullet and, you know, and then we make a pun a couple plays later. So, uh, all in all, it's been, um, like I said, it's just been a heck of a ride and, uh, hopefully we can keep it going, uh, play a really, really good football team, great program in Morningside this weekend. And, um, you know, obviously we're familiar with them just because they're, they're another school from Iowa and, they're the defending national champions, and uh, they got a lot of guys back, especially on their defense. Uh, you know, probably as good a defense as we will play this year. Uh, and this quarterback they got's outstanding. They got great, great receivers. Their running back is probably uh, one of the one. He's one A and one B, probably of the kids we've played this year. Um, so we we got our hands full this week, and uh, but but then again, I feel like we have the first two playoff games too. So. <laughs> 
Uh, but these guys just keep finding a way, and, and hopefully we can do that on Saturday. Coach, and speaking now with Coach Joe Woodley, the head coach of Grandview. And, Coach, one more question, I'm, I mean, and I appreciate your time today. You, you've answered all of, the, all of the questions I would have wanted to ask anyway. You've done it. <laughs> you, you've set this up well, and I really appreciate that, and, and I'm thankful for your time. And you, you talk about Morningside. Obviously, that's a tall order, the number one team in the country. You all don't have much of a history with them. But, of course, you know, the, the Grandview program has been around just a little bit more than a decade, and you've been there since its inception uh, offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, and now in your first season as, as the head coach. Well, I would imagine it's been a fun ride. I mean, 13 games, you haven't picked up a loss yet, so congratulations to yeah, you for that, yeah. uh, for your record. But but uh, let me ask one more thing about defense. And, you know, offense is always the, the big thing people like, the, you know, we always heard in the baseball um, commercials a few years back, you know, chicks dig the long ball. That you yeah. know, everybody wants the home run, and they like the you know the score when it's uh, forty five to thirty eight or something like that. But defense has really been key. You mentioned Flowers too. I mean, not only the the game that he had uh, this past weekend, but he blocked the extra point attempt uh, the week before uh, to really keep things going for you. You know, against Concordia, it's it's been um, a, a defensive run that really has kept you all going but it shouldn't be a surprise because the three top teams in the NAI right right now in defense uh, Morningside and Marion and of course Grandview are all three of the four teams that are remaining and Lindsey Wilson is in the top 10 as well so you know the old adage that defense wins championships clearly that looks like it's going to be the case in 2019. Yeah you know and that's something uh you know, I'll give my dad credit for that when he was a head coach here. he That was one of his, uh, you know, main priorities, and maybe that's why he made me the defensive coordinator. I don't know, even though I didn't know anything, but <laughs> I was I was 28 years old, and he just said, here, here's the keys. You go figure this out. And obviously he helped me uh, uh, and, and steer me in the right direction. Well, one of my first, uh, you know, first things I did is, uh, I went up to the University of Northern Iowa because I knew they'd always played good defense. And uh, the defensive coordinator at the time up there was uh, Chris Kleiman. And uh, he's now the <laughs> head coach at K-State. And we've known known him and his family a long time. And his second, or actually his linebackers coach was Scott Frost, who's at Nebraska. So wow. I, 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 had, uh, I got to sit in there with them for two days. And, uh, you know, just, just, I mean, not that that was – you know, I learned everything in those two days, but boy, it got me, it got me excited about defensive football. And, um, you know, and, and I think that, you know, you're, you're right. It's just, it's not defense isn't sexy, but, uh, I remember a quote that Pat Riley made uh, legendary NBA guy. He always said rebounds equal rings, you know? Right. So that, that's, that's kind of the, you know, the mentality. Defense, and, and he had a few old, of those rings too, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So that, <laughs> You know, you've got to play good defense, especially, you know, this time of year. Um, and and be, because it's always going to give you a chance, you know, the, those teams that are that always have played, you know, you look at Nick Saban and Alabama, you know, they play good defense. You're an Oklahoma guy. Those years where they were really doing well. I mean, they've always done well. Uh, but when they were at that elite level is when Bob Stoops, he's right. a defensive head coach. And, um, you know, there's just. You, you have to because that's what how you can turn programs around and get them going because you know then all of a sudden you're in a game in the fourth quarter uh, you know because of your defense playing well and you know if your offense hasn't played well you always got a chance to you know to maybe get a score at the end of the game or a field goal and you win a game because that's the name of the game is winning uh, it's not style points it's not yards and all that type of stuff it's you just want to win the football game and um, you know that uh, I think we have just found a, we've found a way to do it several different ways this year, and I think that's the mark of a good team. We don't rely on one or the other necessarily, offense or defense. We just, like I said, we've just done a, a good job feeding off one another because in the first playoff game, I don't think we played great defensively, to be perfectly honest, but our offense did. Uh, so they kind of picked us up, and um, you know, and going into that game, we we're probably a little more worried about Concordia's defense, you know, so. Um, that's just how it goes when you got a special team, they just figure it out. And, uh, but, but you do, you know, when you go to play a team like Morningside this week, uh, you better play good defense or else they're going to expose you. They're well coached and they got really good players, you know, and that's a recipe for you to, you know, to, you know, lay an egg if you're not on top of things and focused into your keys and locked in and tackle and all those types of things. So, 
uh, we've got to do that this week or, you know, Morningside's done it to a lot of teams. They've embarrassed a lot of teams, um, you know, the past few years just because they're so explosive. Uh, they're, they're so efficient and then they, they know what they're doing. Um, you can tell they, they all got football IQ. It's just, uh, uh, I, I really respect their program and what they're doing over there. And, um, they, they've, they've done a nice job of sustaining it as well. All right, Coach Joe Woodley, the head coach of the Grandview Vikings. And by the way, a huge matchup. The last time these two teams met in Grandview and Morningside, six years ago in the NAI semifinals, it was a Vikings 35 nothing victory on the way to a national championship. And so another huge matchup coming up this week. Defending champion Morningside number one, number four, Grandview. Both teams undefeated. Coach Joe Woodley, my goodness, thank you so much for your time today and, and uh, learned a lot about the program. Success to you all as you all continue this playoff run and in the future as well. And thank you for being with me on the summit today. All right. Thanks, Joey. I appreciate you having me. Thanks again for watching and be sure and like and share and subscribe to this YouTube channel. In the meantime, God bless you and have a great day.